One of the central pieces of your service-based business is your CRM. Because when you are doing everything by yourself and you start having some scale, it is impossible to keep up with everything without one. And the cost of not having a proper one is very high because you may miss out on some possible customers, you may onboard them poorly, or even worse, manually, and basically give them an overall not very good experience. So they will not recommend you. And even worst of all, you will be stressed out. And that's the last thing that I want for you. I want you to be free. So let's see in this video how we get the perfect CRM done. So before starting to build the CRM itself, the very, very first thing that I always, always do is to design what is gonna be the customer journey. And what do I mean by this? all the different steps that a customer is gonna go through in our case now we're just gonna talk about the leads so once they become a customer it is exactly the same so the tool that i'm using for this is called whimsical and we can see it over here this is an example of a web development agency and uh, the way that we kill this is basically to understand which is the very first step and the first point of contact of a lead in our case was that they book a currently call with us. So once they book the currently call, then we have the call. We will have one automation here that creates a record in our CRM. Then we have the call. If the client wants to continue, we create the proposal. If the client is thinking about it, then we will create something to re-engage with the client according to a follow-up date. And we will send the proposal if he's on. If proposal is accepted, automatically we can send the link for the first payment. And then we will onboard the client and everything will be automated. And the same applies to every part of then the service delivery. Okay, so it's exactly the same, but we are just gonna focus on this today because this part is what may make you lose sales. So let's start building the CRM. Now that we have defined this, let's go into our CRM. This is how the system is going to look like after we have gone through the process. Even if it looks simple, there is a lot of things happening behind the scenes, but we will see everything. In Notion, a very good practice is to always use a general databases page to host all the different databases that are powering the whole workspace. This is the only way that we have to understand which databases we have in the system. And I'm going to create one database over here, full page for our CRM. We can call it CRM. Now I'm going to be creating the properties that we are going to need for this. Now I want to I wanna build the status property. In Notion, there is a status property, but I don't want to use it because it doesn't work with the API. It doesn't work with automations. So, and I want to be able to trigger automations with this status property. So what I'm going to do instead is to use a select property, which can be built as a status property, and then we can we can trigger automations with it. So for the select property, what I'm gonna do is to already in this part of the process, I build these, which are the statuses that we are gonna be using in Notion. So I will just have to copy them, okay? I just added the last one, converted, instead of continuing with all the, the statuses. But yes, we are just gonna be focusing on the, on the lead side. This is gonna be the amount that he's paid. The format is gonna be USD. And then I want one text property with call info, because typically in Canonly, when people book calls, uh, we also use forms to get information from the potential client before the call. So I will want all this information to come here. And finally, I always have the catch up next date property so we can follow up with them in case they're thinking about it and everything. And we will see where we are gonna be able to see the people we have to catch up with. So this is gonna be the base of the CRM. Now, let me add some data here so we can see this, the examples better. Okay, and now this database is in the databases page, but this is not where the users are gonna be using this. We want to have something like this that is more user-friendly. So let's build it. We can come over here, generate a blank page, and this can be our CRM. So now to bring this database in here and customize the view that we are gonna be seeing, we do slash linked view of database. And this is basically asking us where we want to take the data from. In our case, it's from the CRM database that we have just built. New, new empty view, and this is our leads. Now, for all these status-based processes, I always use a board view. Color columns, don't show database title. And now, if we go to group, I don't want to hide empty groups. 
Okay, so this is going to be the, the first and most important view where we see the status of everyone. Now we can build a second view. I'm going to build it over here, but we have a lot of options. This view is going to show us who we need to contact. I'm going to call this view catch up with. And from here, I can create a filter. And it's people that, that I want to catch up with this week. I mean, this you can say honor before today, whatever. I'm going to use this week like this. I have a little heads up and this is going to be sort ascending. So let's say that I have another lead. And by the way, even if I created this, this view over here and is not the core database that is in the general databases, I can still create records in the database. So let's say that I have this guy over here and I say that I want to catch up with him here. So that lead is going to appear here. This we don't need to see. This probably we want to see and that's it. Okay, so how are we actually going to be using this? Because we want that the biggest amount of steps of this are automated. So I'm going to be using a couple of tools. It is very different when the automation is triggered from Notion and when an automation is triggered from an external app. So what is the very first step? Let's go to our whimsical. This, the first step is that the lead books a Calendly code and this creates a Notion record. So this is an external app. So for external apps, we're going to be using an external tool that in this case is called Zapier. We can also use make.com. These are the two that I use the most. But in, in this case, we're going to be using Zapier. So let's go to the browser. Let's go to Zapier. And we can basically see what I have already built over here. This is using cal.com. It uses the same service as, as Canly, but the process is exactly the same. And in fact, we will just need this very first step and this fourth step. So the way that Zapier works is we need here to identify which is the trigger. In our case is Calendly and we will go through the setup process. The event is going to be booking created or event created. Then we will have to link the account and finally we will test the trigger to get some information inside of Zapier. That is it. If we have already used Calendly to book a call, then the latest sessions are going to be shown here. If not, some sample data is going to appear. That's it. Continue with selected record. And then we are going to create another step that the app where the app is Notion and the event is create a database item. So what this is doing is whenever there is a booking, Zapier is going to create that inside of Notion. We'll have to select the database, add the project name, whatever, like all the different data that we want to add into Notion. And that is it. We'll just have to publish it. And this is already running. I mean, if it's not running, just check that this is turned on. And that is it. From now on, whenever there is a call booked in Calendly, it's going to go to our CRM over here. Okay, so let's say that the lead has already come here, but now we have to have a call with him. So what do I typically do? I create a template for having a space to write the call notes in because here in Notion, we can open this database item and here we can write. So we can use this space to write our call notes, but I want everything to be useful and beautiful. So what I'm going to do is to create a new template for that. And this is a very good place. So if you have a script that you follow during your first call, you can paste it here. And then below you can have the intro call notes. I mean, this is a template you can you can play with it. And that is it. Now for these records that were created before, I need to run this manually and that's it. And I have it here. So let's say that I'm going to have the call with this with this guy. And these are all the notes that we got from the from the call. So now during the call, he told me that maybe later. So he didn't tell me no, but he tell me maybe later. So what I can do is I can bring him to this status and I can add him. Okay. So I'm going to catch up next, next mm, Tuesday. And that's it like this. I don't forget that I need to meet with this person or that I need to text this person to see what's up. So this is crucial for winning projects that we may lose if we don't follow up because people are dispersed. Maybe they, they don't even remember about you. They have all the things on the table. So it is very good that we that we follow up with them. And once this time comes, Daniel is going to appear here reminding me about that. There is one thing that we can add to this database, which is a filter by the status. I just want that the status is qualified maybe later because once they get out of this, then I don't want to, I don't want to see them anymore here. 
So now let's see what other kind of automation we can be using in Notion. And with these two kinds, we can build everything, trust me. So now the automation that I want is to be able to send a proposal automatically from Notion. So how does this look like? My idea is that whenever I drop this guy over here, an automation is triggered and it goes to a third party software to create the proposal and sends the proposal automatically to that person. How do we do this? Well, of course, we will need the email of the person in here, and this will come from Calendly. And now what we are going to need is a third party tool that I always use that is called eSignatures. This is basically just an app to send documents that then people can sign and they are legally binding. Some people also use DocuSign, but I prefer this one, it's much simpler. And the only thing that we need to, to create is a, a template of our different uh, contracts. And here is where we are seeing how good it is to be able to standardize the service that you're offering. If you're able to always have the same contract for everyone, same pricing, same deliveries, same everything, then you're winning. You don't need to spend time crafting a new contract every time that a new lead comes to your door. So here, as you can see, I just only have three, but basically I just use one. So you can create yours and once it is created, then we can build the automation. This automation so I can show you the other automation tool, I have created it in make.com. This can also be done in Zapier. I just want to show you both options so you can see which one you like more. And this is the automation. It's quite simple. In my case, a little bit more complicated because I have three different options for of contract. But in your case, it can just be from this to this. And now you may be wondering what the F is this. Okay, so this is a webhook and this is a way that APIs have to send information from one place to the other. I mean, if you're very technical, of course, this explanation is quite shitty, but just so we can understand. So how is information coming into here? Well, I'm using another tool that is called the gist. This is one of the simplest tools ever. And what it does is to listen what is happening in a Notion database. And when that thing happens, it is triggered and send the information of that record over via webhook to another place. So this is the trigger that we have set up. In my case, when the status matches contract sent. In our case over here, when the status matches creating proposal. And once this happens, then call a webhook. This is the option that we need to select. And this is the webhook that make provided me with. So if I create this webhook step, this URL is gonna be what I paste over here and that is it that is all the setup that we need to do in the gist and now we go back to make and let's see how i'm creating this step in e signatures there is a way to create variables within the documents you can see how in the in the app itself because every app is different but there is always a way and then we can populate these variables with which is the real client's name which is the scope, I don't know, first payment, whatever payment. And all this information is gonna come from Notion. So that's why it's very important that we have in Notion all the information that we need in order to send the proposal. If you need more information, then maybe you need to add more properties or more questions to your calendar list so the properties are already filled or properties that you fill manually, but everything has to be inside of a Notion property. And once everything is done, that is it. We just need to turn this on and it will be running. So whenever I move this guy's status to here, an email is gonna be sent to the customer. And why an email? Because instead of e-signatures, there is this option to whenever you create a live contract, that contract is sent automatically via email. And that is it. Then following the whole step, we can build all the different automations just using these two methods. Things that are triggered from Notion, we're gonna be using the gist directly. Things that are triggered from outside of Notion, we're gonna be using Zapier or make directly using whatever trigger. Other things that we can do is whenever we move this guy over here is that he's going to receive an email with a payment link so he can do our first payment. Or even better, we can also create an automation that the trigger is gonna be in that a contract from e-signatures has been signed and then 
automatically the client is going to receive an email with that payment link so then it is fully automated and we can also do that in the back end this guy is moving steps forward then the next automation that we can that we can build is that whenever we have received the first payment the lead is moved to converted and maybe we create their project in our notion database for example and we send them an email onboarding them into our service with all the different links of data that he needs to read and how to's and everything so as you can see by having this very simple setup and all the automations that are connecting all our different apps we can build an almost automated crm system with a very simple but useful way to follow up with different leads that I am sure that is going to make your life so much easier, give you so much more free time so you can actually focus on the service delivery itself and on marketing your services. And then, of course, you will be able to have a view such as this one, then all the client fulfillment statuses and inside of them with all the different tasks and meetings. So this is going to allow you to do all this. So well, that is it for this video and as always, hasta la próxima.